So was it? Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. So we got that stuff too. So I got that to look forward to. All right, so <laughs> we don't know what the YouTube channel's name is, so we can't even say what it is. Yeah. Um, but we can say this is episode negative, negative 10? Negative, Sorry, negative 10. All right, cool. So welcome to the unknown YouTube channel, episode negative 10. What, you can talk. You know you're dying to this talk. The very beginning. You know what? I don't think that's a prop. You should at least come up with something, like even if it's the, the Mitch and Cody moment. I think it'll come to us. Moments with Mitch right and now, Cody. Right now we don't have it. We don't, that's what I mean. Like to right. give this a title though, this moment a title. Maybe Mitch and Cody moments can suffice until you have the Ancona wine. Okay, take two. Up. Welcome to Mitch and Cody wine moments. That's so serious. I know, it's way too serious. Oh my god, well that's anyway, a little can we Can we stop talking about that stuff and let's talk about the wine. That's easier. Yep. So, what do we got? So this is Luigi Ferrando's Erba Luce di Coluzzo, um, which is a Piedmontese white by the great iconic Luigi Ferrando, who's most famous for his red wines, which come from the village of Carema. Carema is an appellation in Piedmont with only like two official producers. There's Luigi Ferrando and then there's the co-op. And then he makes a little bit of this just sort of as like his like table white, very like clean, crisp white. So to interpret some of that, so it's an Italian white from Piedmont. Yep. Exactly. Made by a guy who I couldn't pronounce his name. Luigi. Lu Luigi I got. That. Luigi. Luigi I got. All right. It's like it's the little a, Mario Brothers guy. It's got almost like a little um apricot sort of tangerine thing going on. Do you want to grab a glass and, and join us on this side of the camera? Do, sure, come on. You do, but what? I feel you like have... you guys need to move like a step to the left. Okay, right. we can do that. That's kind of nice. Yeah, right. <laughs> so what you don't know is she just took gum out of her mouth and stuck it to her hand. So oh that's the professionalism. And now you're on that side of the bar. Do you want to be on this side? All right. You should stay in the middle. Right. It creates a valley that way. Erbaluche. Thank you. Erbaluche. It's kind of fun to say that. Mm, Erbaluche. There's a group in Piedmont which is something to the effect of the order of the Erbaluche. Just sort of, um, do they wear capes? I think they do. It's uh, <laughs> definitely that kind of thing. Do they wear luchador masks? That would uh, be... Uh, 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 um, so what do we think? What do we... I like it a lot. Um, we've, uh, mm. we've chilled it down to the bones and then uh, let it warm up a little bit. And uh, now that it's warming up, you can definitely tell it's got a little bit more weight to it. It's definitely a more fleshy type of Italian white, and uh, maybe it's a little bit more challenging to see on the camera, but Mitch holds up the white background of his notebook, you can see it's got a little bit more of like, almost like a dark golden hue, which is, um, that's uh, sort of an, an effect of Arab Luce, Arab Luce generally has a little bit more of that like um, oxidative, like golden hue, although the wine's not oxidated at all, it's crispy clean. Mm. Um, but definitely marked by like peaches and apricots. It's very like tree fruit. Mm. A little bit almost like um, orchard fruit, like uh, apples, like crispy coons or something. I think mm. my, my biggest takeaway is that it does have some weight to it, mm -hmm. has some mouthfeel yeah. to it. Yeah. I think it's like a pretty splendid winter white because it does have a little bit of that weight. Um, but when it was chilled earlier, did that lightened up a bit. Mm. So I think it would work really well even come come spring and summer. It's a great one. Why don't we talk for a second about the, the back label, which is really the front label, but who, uh, who brings this in? This comes to us from Rosenthal Wine Merchants, which is uh, one of our most conscientious sources for French and Italian wines. Um, and uh, we work very closely with Rosenthal. Um, it's a very curated portfolio that uh, I'd say one, one thing that's really nice about Rosenthal is that they fully invest in the producers so that you know pretty much every single year if they have someone that they believe in they go to the producer and 
they buy everything that that producer will offer from them. Um, you know, nine times out of ten. Yeah, that speaks volumes. In, in today's industry, that you know, so much is more brand-based versus people-based. Um, it's nice to know that there's people like Rosenthal out there that stand by their producers no matter what, which is great. All right, that was fun. So this actually might end up being um, maybe a Friday off of one of these things. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, could be. Maybe. It's, that's good. It's in the running. It's, it's very All right. Good. Cool. Well, no. You want to keep rolling? Yeah. Okay. Because we're gonna go into the next thing. Cool. Surprise! Yay! New things. Yeah. So we're really open. The... So this has been. Um, so we've been. This is what is this? January, January fourth. So this has probably been is sitting back here for probably three weeks. So it's a sample bottle um, from a rep. Uh, we used to carry this particular producer, Syrah. Um, it is their Casey Labs um, label for Kibblestad sellers. Kibblestad, yeah. Kibblestad. So this this particular label that they do, the Casey Labs, uh, none of the wines sort of stick around very long. So the Syrah came and went. Uh, and then this is their next wine, it's the Zin. So I figure Cody and I haven't been in the same, Cody and I and Ellie haven't been Can in the same. Can you tell us why we don't see those wines stay around for long? Because um, they're super delicious, but besides that, um, they're made in minuscule amounts. So super small amounts, handmade, small producer to begin with. So, uh, and cool producer. As far as I remember, do we have this rosé too? We did, yeah. We, yeah, we did I think we still we probably might still have a couple do, bottles. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Super, super nice young winemaker. Um, some really great backstory to it. So this is from Mendocino, which is just north of Napa. Often offers a particular value that you don't always find in Napa and Sonoma. This is where many of the Fred Peterson wines come from. Sure very necessary to our core selection. So this is a, sort of a glimpse into what Cody and I do. Um, Cody does more than I do, but we do when we're in the same building together and we have wines to taste. So we have never tried this wine, so we're going to try it now and see what we think. And I think Ellie's going to try it too, because I can't imagine she's not going to. I would love to. Okay. Van Morrison's oh, it smells awesome. great. Thank you. You're welcome. Love the color. Mmm, beautiful. I'm I'm calling mm. atypical on the. Mm. It just seems a little light, uh, look yeah. wise, but mm. yeah. I kind of dig that. What do we got listed as alcohol? Anybody want to guess alcohol? Alcohol? Anybody? Anybody? Twelve five on the label. Okay. What do you got? Anything? Can we guess? No. They have on the label 12. Wow. So by, by Zin standards, wow. damn. Very low. I like the clear loss bottle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. It almost, when you look at that, you're like, oh, this is something that you should chill down. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. This is so interesting. I think, I think it carries over in the atypical side of things as far as the weight. It seems a little lighter. But it does have it does have some of the traditional flavor characters. It's got a little bit really? of Really? Because you didn't want that on camera. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Ben. Sure. Right. Um, it has some of the, the... It's a little bit, little bit grapey, a little bit raisiny, but it's so fresh. It's definitely mm. like... I don't know. Mm -hmm. it, it tastes it tastes like natural wine. It's got a little bit of funk around the edges, but not in like not in like a dirty kind of way. Just more mm -hmm. like a like pleasantly mm -hmm. a layered way. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. Mm. And dare I say crushable. I think you dare, and you should. And by comparison, if we were to go over there and pull more typicals in, 
and, and put it in a glass, you, I believe you'd see the difference as mm -hmm. far as color, concentration, just weight, alcohol. Oh, yeah. Remind me next time we film not to put the, the phone right. Yeah. Noted. Okay. That's why it's episode negative. It's episode ten. It's just a moment. It's just a Mitch right, and Cody just moment. Without. Without. Mm -hmm. Very. Very casual. Uh, I like this a lot. This is beautiful. It's like red fruits with a little bit of like woodiness to it. That reminds me of being in a wood shop that's been yeah. processing like a very fine oh, wood. I like that. Yeah, me too. But at, at the same time, it's not it's not particularly oaky. No, it's no. It's just like almost like those organic, like, right. yeah, it's sort not an of oaky flavors. Or yeah. And it does it's have that little raisiny thing mm -hmm. that you yeah. expect in a zin, but yeah. not not a pruny way though. It's yeah, not in like a sweet a way. Fresh, crispy kind of mm -hmm. raisin. Yeah. Yeah. A complex flavor for sure. Yeah. I wonder if. Um, See, I have no idea since this is the first time we've ever shot this way. So, A, I have no idea how the audio is going to come out, mm -hmm. which is crazy. Because if the audio sucks, I'm going to have to do a voiceover. Ooh, I'll do all three voices. Oh my god, that'd be yeah, hilarious. That'd be really funny. You might actually go viral with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go viral. Um, and then I also don't know how like the labels are going to come out mm. as far as in the shot. I will also, since we're talking about the shot on the shot, I will say you're going to all want to move down like a nudge. Because you, you are, Ooh. yeah, you guys tend to gravitate this way. So you're like, even sometimes coming out of the frame. Plus, this part of the frame is very unattractive and doesn't really need to be there. What part of the frame? You know, the Purell, the Schweppes. The no, 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 but that speaks to authenticity. This is my little area that I work in. This is really what I, I this is not just a set. Kind of. It's this. I stand here most of the day, you looking do. at I stuff know you and do. working. I know you do. I drink a lot of Schweppes. You do. I like to try to stay safe with the it's, can, it's candid. It's yes. very yeah. yeah. Well, maybe that's a nice way to uh, frame it as well. Candid sure. moments. Candid, Aww. candid, candid moments. Like we should chill this down. I think you're mm. right. Yeah, that was good. That was very good. So I think I'm going to do this. So. Kiffelstad Sellers Casey Labs Zinn. This is their 2017. Let's show the camera, see if the camera will actually do that. And then we'll do the camera back here like this. Not available as of yet, um, but probably coming in next week, I'd imagine. Pretty happy. Probably. Right? probably should check the it's pricing in, on it. It's in stock. Yeah. Probably should check the pricing on it, make sure it fits within that realm. I'd say sub $20. I think it's, I was going to say under $25. But Ideally, okay. ideally sub twenty. Yeah. yeah. Like this would, this would be put out like twenty bucks, nineteen ninety nine. Mm -hmm. I would like Can't that. promise that. Don't I would like that. Yeah. Right. Nice. And then this. Let's do the bottle shot of this. Herbaluche. That's the important. Well, it's one side of the bottle. I would say it's important, or more important, because that side of the bottle is impressive as well. And this one. Okay, we'll let the cat out of the bag. Okay. Why the hell is there a cat in the bag? And why wouldn't you let him out? Just saying. I'm pretty sure that's going to be an offering, if not next week, the week after. Yep. Right on? Yeah. Cool. Sharp pricing. So I think that's it for um, episode negative 10 Cheers. of Moments with uh, Cody Mitch and L. Okay. Magic Cheers. Moments. Cheers. Great. Ciao. Um...